Okay, so hopefully those kind of reviews uh, from last day are helpful. I think it is especially helpful in this case because uh, what we are doing here um, is, is kind of a, well, I mean, it is really a critical step. Uh, so last day when you were working on your Finstagram applications and you were uh, trying to get a user to sign up and sign in and all this kind of stuff, that is what the coursework was, correct? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, there's one part you haven't figured out yet, or at least you haven't, what hasn't been shown to you is how to keep the user logged in, right? Um, HTTP is what we call stateless. Uh, the server sits there and it just processes requests as they come in. Um, by itself, HTTP has no way of knowing if it's talking to the same client between requests. So obviously this is a problem. If it was stateless all the time, you would log in, you would try to access some sort of protected resource. You might get that return the first time, but then as soon as you navigate away from the, the page, try to access something else, you're going to have to log in again because it forgot who you are. The way we solve that problem are with what are called sessions. So now you guys are already familiar with this uh, special params hash, which uh, you know it uh, receives all that um, post data and it parses it and makes it uh, nice and easy to, to work with. We also have a sessions hash. So uh, today's objective is we are going to use these sessions to log a user in and have the server remember that yes, this user has already provided a valid username and email, or sorry, valid email and password, and that uh, you should keep on serving up protected resources until that same user erases the session. Um, so yeah, that's all part of it too. So once, you know, maybe you, you come to your website, you come to Finstagram and you, you go to, you, you try to log into your user profile, for example. You know, it's been a couple of days. Um, uh, you try to, uh, to access this and it asks you for a password. The expectation, at least in, you know, in, in uh, you know, 21st century web development is that you would be immediately redirected to the resource to which you initially requested. So you don't want to be redirected back to the, um, the home page. You asked to see your profile, you provided your details, they were correct. You should be immediately redirected to your, your, your uh, profile. As an example, I think that's a basic, pretty basic expectation. Um, and we're also going to talk about helper methods, which uh, we've seen a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll talk about those. And as part of this, I'm going to just do like a simple demo. So we're going to go through the slides. Sometimes I like to intersperse demonstration with uh, with the slides themselves. Today, we're just going to go through the slides, and I'm going to give you a very rudimentary demo so that I think it'll make it a little bit easier to absorb what you're what you've been tasked with in your your coursework. So, how do we log the user in? I've already described the problem. Um, the server doesn't know who you are from request to request. That is not part of the HTTP protocol. Um, Sinatra and most other web frameworks. Um, uh, this is you know this isn't exactly like a recent revelation. Uh, we we have a, another special hash we call we call sessions, and you can basically put whatever you want into a session, and this is what's going to help us. But how does it work? Cookies. And we've all heard about this. I, I know cookies have a very negative connotation, but uh, and for the longest time, people you know were always clearing out their browser history and getting rid of their cookies. And, yeah, it's I don't even think you could function without cookies anymore. Um, Basically, what a cookie is, or at least in this this uh, this context of the session, is that it needs some way to identify you, along with every single request, with uh, every single new session that uh, that uh, opens up with the server. Um, a little string of numbers is saved on your on your hard drive, and you can look at this. You can use the inspector, and you can find out uh, what precisely that string of numbers is. This string of numbers now gets uh, passed along with every single request that you make. And the server uses this string of numbers to identify you as unique. And if a session has already been established, then you can look inside that hash. Every single user gets a, a, a hash to himself. Um, so now for us to do this, 
a uh, very simple way. And this is, I, I, well, I don't know if it's even that it's just simple. It's just like the way I know to do it. I don't know of really any other way to do it. Once that user logs in and a session or a, a cookie has been stored there, the session ID is then put into the session. And we use a helper method to say, well, is there a session ID or sorry, a user ID here? Has someone actually logged in? The browser never actually sees the user ID. This just stays put on the server. The only thing that makes your client or your browser unique to the server is this, this little cookie, this little string of uh, uh, hexadecimal digits, usually. I think probably always, actually. I'm not sure, really. Um, but we can, we can look at that. We can look and see what a cookie looks like or at least the, what a session ID looks like. Um, so we use that to, to identify and to save that user ID. Well, here's a good example of a cookie. So if we were to look inside of a, um, the inspector, the Chrome inspector, uh, we could open up one of those interactions, those requests, and this is something very similar to what you'd see. And you got uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, and the digits 0 through 9. This is a a hexadecimal value. And you also see this kind of thing, right? Ad tracker. They want to sell you ads. Every website I go to these days, I see an ad for Lighthouse Labs, which, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense because, you know, I'm not going to go sign up for the class. But, like, clearly someone's watching me and doing something here. There's some cookies saved in my, my browser. Yeah. yeah. Um, someone's watching it. <laughs> it's it's pretty it's not exactly effective advertising really, but you know that's that's how they do it i guess i've seen them too actually i, I have ads for um the curve all the time oh yeah the parochial all the time and i'm like no what, why i'm not quite there yet you know that's funny too because i i sent i know gmail's always been suspicious for this right that was kind of like everybody was afraid of gmail when it first came out yeah because i mean they really do they read all of your emails um I, I talked to a plumber and we briefly interacted through Gmail and all of a sudden I've got ads for my local plumber up in Northwest Calgary on every site I go to. And now, now <laughs> this guy charged me $75 to tell me it would cost me $400 to fish uh, what turned out to be an action figure out of my toilet. So I ended up, I paid him his $75 and then I'm I just got my hands dirty. That's that's what happened. That's, that's a, I don't know if that's a funny story or what, but wow. you got you got children. This is what happens sometimes. Oh, we skipped a slide. Let's go back here. So with every request comes uh, an HTTP response. Um, and now the most obvious thing that's accompanying or embodied in this response or uh, contained, should I, I should say, inside this response is the web page itself. Um, yeah. There you go. And it looks like the uh, the session ID is being passed back with it. So there's always this talk. And, you know, it, it may be the case, and I can't really speak for Sinatra. I don't really know this for sure. But um, if this session ID is being sent back with each response, uh, it could also be changing every single time as well. I don't know that it does that, but that would be a really great security feature. Because if someone were to hypothetically get this while you were interacting with the server, they could also gain your resources on the server. So that's why you log out when you're using the computer at the library or whatever. Uh, okay, so um, in this case, so I kind of gave you a complicated example. Um, once you are successfully logged in, and this is just kind of a, well, this is a rule of thumb. I don't know that there's any hard and fast rules, but uh, this is what we do. When you post data in, in whatever you're doing, including a login, you always redirect. You don't render a template. Um, in this case, what you guys will be doing with your Finstagram is when uh, when you log in, you go back to the home page and see your, your, your feed of photos and comments and all this kind of stuff. Uh, there's also a way to get the initial requested route, save it in a flash or save it wherever, and then once successfully logged in, redirect to the, uh, uh, the profile, for example. That's just one example I came up with. Uh, a lot of what we do here is assisted a great deal by what we call helper methods. Um, I always call these view helpers because I, they, they, 
I mean, they kind of turn up here and there, but I think the original intention at least, maybe I'm doing something wrong myself. The original intention at least was to have these methods that you define in your Sinatra application be used by the views. So now if you've been paying attention at all over the last five weeks, and I know we, all of you guys have, you're all very sharp, um, you can kind of guess what this code is doing. So you come to a page, you're logged in, you want to see the link to log out, right? Otherwise, if you're not logged in, if there's no user ID stored in the session somewhere, um, you want to see the, uh, the login link, right? So this is just pseudocode here, but um, that's exactly what's happening. So at some point the user signed in, uh, there's this exchange of session IDs via cookies and all this kind of stuff. And that user ID was stored to the session. So then we create a, a helper method just to determine, just a nice, fast, easy way to just see if this user has been logged in. And that, of course, impacts the way our view is presented or what is rendered in our view. And this is all done, uh, at least for, for us, it's all done in actions.rb, just alongside your, your routes and all the rest of it. So when the user is ready to leave, and this is what I was saying before, you know, when we first started here over in that uh, conference room, uh, this was a very real problem because I wasn't able to use uh, my trusty computer, which no one else has access to. I was logged into that public machine, and the second day I came back, I was still logged into a lot of this stuff, and I was actually pretty, pretty upset about that. Um, even despite logging out, because we use something called OAuth 2, I didn't log out in the right place. So I was logged in over here, and even though it looked like I was logged out, I wasn't logged out. So anyone could have come and, I don't know, stolen my identity and all of that entails, they probably thought twice. Um, so, you know your credit history? No. well, I'm actually, that's probably the one, <laughs> the one admirable thing about me. <laughs> Other than that, I don't know. What are they going to do? They're going to steal my social insurance number and pay my taxes? Go Yay. nuts. You try it. I dare you. Um, so when the user is ready to leave, though, we have this user ID and it's stored in the session. And this is what kind of hinges, or this is what, um, uh, well, at least this helper method uses to determine if the user is logged in. Um, and there may be other helper methods as well. If we want to log this user out, we just simply clear the session. Session no longer exists. And that is very easy. It gives you two options here. We can assign that value stored in the session. Remember, session is just a hash, ordinary thing. Um, or we can call sessions.clear. Now, you can store anything in a session. I would say clear it out entirely myself, but you can also set these values to nil. So we'll look at that a little bit. Okay, so once, uh, once I finish talking up here, we got about half an hour in which to, to squeeze in a demo. Um, you will be actually logging in the user to the to your application and just in doing so fulfilling these basic expectations of a website that we, we all have here in the year 2016. Um, yeah, you, you guys, uh, it took us a long time to get this point where we have a web application, but now you have, uh, assuming that you complete the coursework, uh, you'll have a modern web application, contemporary web application. This is a big part of it. So let's get rid of that. Now, I did a whole bunch of prep work today. And I was kind of looking at uh, what I did. And it seems a little bit complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to give you this very, very simple introduction to sessions. We're not even going to log in a user or anything. So part of what I'm doing here is it's inspired from my prep work, but it might be a simplified version. Let's, uh, let's see how that goes. So what I want to do, I can get rid of this. And just to make sure that everything is running properly, I'm going to open up my application in a window and make sure it says hello world because I always use that same template to get started with Sinatra. There it goes. All I'm going to do is just count 
the number of times a user visits. So what can we do? We can have uh, maybe in our index view. So this is going to be like a more sophisticated, sophisticated hello world program. It's going to say, hello, you've been here this many times. Uh, one of the first things we could probably do is dress it up a little bit. I think this is more just kind of like a neat thing to know. But if someone comes and visits your, your website, it's really easy to determine where that person came from. So here's something we could do. We can store the session or the requester's IP in a session variable. So let's say session, ordinary hash, doesn't have an IP key yet, but as soon as I assign a value to it, it's created. So I'm going to take this little request object that always accompanies everything and put it there, right? So this is kind of like, you know, really uh, an easy way to scare someone away from your site if they think they're up to no good, right? It's like, well, your request, your IP has been logged. If you are up to nefarious activities, I'm going to call the RCMP. So we can do a couple things. Uh, let's just say, hello to our IP. Again, we can just treat this as we would any other object. Oh wait, actually this might not work, but let's try it. I think this is gonna blow up. Sorry, I heard something. Oh, okay, someone's on the phone. <laughs> I thought there was a question. All right, I think this is gonna blow up, but let's try it. It seems like that's oh yeah no you can do it so this is this is where this is where I'm living at you guys if you go to that uh, address up there you can you can see what your IP is as well so you know in in the spirit of the the slides here I'm going to create a helper method and all I want to do is find out how many times um, this IP has visited my site so over here in actions. I can do this. Did I do this last time? It seems like I did this last time. Um, anything you define in this helpers block, and this is this is as easy as it is. You just define this helpers block, you wrap any method inside of it, and you can uh, access it from um, your views, just like you do with your instance variables. So I'm gonna say get visit count, easy. And so what do I want to do? I say, uh, if session, I can say num visits. If this is, if this hasn't been defined yet, I want to, uh, I want to define it now. So I'm not even going to start counting. I'm just going to say session visits, or sorry, num visits. equals zero. So this isn't really going to change until uh, the user has visited a couple of times. Uh, something seems out of alignment. What happened here? That doesn't seem right. It's good to keep your code lined up. So when I see this, oh uh, yeah, okay, so it's, the indentation is pretty deep there, but I don't know, we'll work with it. Otherwise, I just want to add one to this value. So we'll say else session num visits. Have you guys seen this operator? You guys know what that means? Add one to the value. Yeah, add num to the existing value. I, I it feels like I have showed this to you before, but in case you haven't, I'll uh, I'll comment this out. I just want to make sure that you understand what I'm doing there. Oops. The, the, the top line, the line that's commented out is equivalent to this line. So it looks kind of weird, but whatever here is currently in sessions, just add the number one to it. And this is such a common operation that we have a, a shorthand and I certainly do prefer the shorthand. It's uh, much easier to read.
And once you get used to that, uh, that syntax. Okay, so nothing yet. Really all I want to do is just make sure that nothing crashes. Because every time I reload this, there's always that horrible feeling that, uh oh, you're going to see that Sinatra doesn't know this ditty maybe, or there's no null exception, unknown method or variable. Did you save it? I did save it. It's not meant to do anything. It looks like this is okay. But yeah, let's double check. No, looks like I saved it. So now, now I have an idea of how many times my site has been visited, but I have not displayed this to the user. Yeah, exactly. So I'll come back to my index. We're going to make a nice single page app. And I will say, if this is the first time, if the number of visits is zero, I will say, you know, I'll give a friendly message. I'll say, um, if, sorry, what was the name of my helper method? Get visit count. There we go. If get visit count equals zero, then let's say, Enjoy your visit. Why not? And we'll just put an end there for now. Let's see what happens. Now, I suspect because this thing actually, every time I, I have been um, refreshing the page here, is, is actually counting the number of visits. So how many times have I visited? Twice? Four? You think four times? I don't know. We're not going to know yet because I haven't actually output that. So let's do it one more time. This might be number five. So yeah, nothing. Oh, enjoy your visit. That's my first visit. Uh oh, that doesn't bode well. Oh no, that's okay. Yeah, okay, no, that's fine. All right. So now, um, now I got to give myself a different message. So now, if I if I did this correctly, I should be able to press refresh again, and this is going to disappear. I think. Let's try it. And if it doesn't disappear, then then I'm a fraud, and you guys are wasting your money. <gasps> oh, <laughs> my heart stopped there for a second. I'd have to resign, and you'd be like, "Oh, wait, where did he go? Going home to watch The Bachelorette? Look at all the TV I watch, right? Jeez. All right. So I don't have anything to uh, to, to tell me how many times I've actually come here. Let's uh, let's fix that. So I visited twice. Else, uh, you have visited. Uh oh, I've already kind of anticipated a problem. I'm just going to do this just so we don't get too crazy here. Say number of visits. The problem here is that if I call get visit count again, it's gonna go up. So how many times have I gone? I've gone by two times. If I do it this way, I'm just gonna show you what happens. Uh, so I did it once, I press refresh, that was twice. Should be three. I think it's going to show me four. Can you guys think of why? My money's on four. Let's try it out. Mm. That's okay then. It didn't start counting until you gave it operations to count with. Let's try it again. This should skip though, I would have thought. It should be up to five. Oh yeah. So there is definitely an error. Now it's going to go up to seven. Well, yeah, and that's you know that's the problem, and this you know this is the kind of thing that when you're developing, this is why you kind of go slow. You got to figure this stuff out, and you don't always anticipate, especially if you've been doing this for like six hours and you're just getting tired. Um, the problem here is, is that at some point I'm I'm comparing this to zero, right? So I actually call this method, this helper method, and it adds one, and then it determines okay, well it's not equal to zero. I'm going to call it again. again. So how do I fix this? Could you reference it other than calling it? Yes. How do I do that? I have no idea. 
I can use a variable, right? Yes. Yes. And there's there's all sorts of ways we could do this. I, I, we're using helper methods, so I'm going to, to do it this way. I will say, I'll call this one visits. And as you've all seen before, this is nothing new. Anything on the left-hand side, that's the variable name. Anything on the right-hand side, that's the value uh, that you're assigning. So let's call this one visits. We'll just remove this. It's still inflating the number of times I've actually visited this site, but at least now it's not going to go up by two every single time. Let's try it out. Eight, nine, and now it's working. It's basically doing what we want it to do. Okay, so now, now we're going to do, so th this is pretty easy. Let's just give a quick recap of what we've done. It's, it's been very little. We've done like almost nothing, and this is what it's doing. So we come to here. Uh, when you land on the page, all I'm doing is uh, assigning request IP to a session variable. And there's no reason why I have to do this. It's just kind of what I did. Um, you know, it would probably make a heck of a lot more sense to do this. Just like that and change it like this. That's kind of a silly way to do it. But I just wanted to show you that, yes, you can store these things inside a session. Uh, one thing we haven't actually looked at is to see if we can see that uh, that cookie that's stored on uh, my local computer here. So if I come over to the inspector, so this is just kind of a recap. Uh, we can look in this network tab, and unless you're actually looking at it, it doesn't seem to record data. I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Here we go. So refresh. I should see some uh, some transactions, some requests. I think that's one there. What does it look like? Oh, that's just the response. Let's take a look instead at resources. That's what I was actually looking for. Here's my cookies. And there's my session ID. It's called rack session. So if you're ever really curious, that's, that's what's actually happening. Now, if I come back to this network, I should still see it somewhere. Is it under headers? Well, yeah, but this is, I, I want to demonstrate that this, uh, this ID is actually being sent with every single transaction. And you can see at right here, this is the response. Where was the request? I was actually, you know, for my own personal curiosity, I want to also see if this um, session ID was, is changing ever. Um, I was just curious. I'm not sure exactly how Sinatra does that. But this is the one I sent. This is the one that got sent back. It looks like they're the same. If I refresh again, probably is going to be the same. I'll look at that. Uh, yeah, it looks, I think that's the same. I'm actually not even sure. It's pretty similar. It's pretty similar. It, might, it might just be counting up. So let's look at some distinctive, easy to remember features. This looks like ba. Yeah, we could do that, sure. So I'll just take these first digits. I, I want, I, I'm, what I'm trying to determine here is if this uh, session ID changes every single time. So I'll, I'll do it up to that lowercase l. And I will make a note. You know, I'll just put it up here in the URL just to, for now. Okay, so let's try that again. It just occurred to me when I was telling you about this, that, you know, maybe it's a good idea to change this. You know, it's going to be a little bit of overhead on the server side, but it's definitely, uh, no, I think that's the same. Yeah, no, that's the same one. Looks all the way up to that lowercase l. Yeah, that's the same. Okay. Curiosity satisfied. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's where your cookies are stored. That's where your sessions are stored. If you ever want to actually go in and uh, monkey with that, you're, you're welcome to do it too. If I were to erase that session ID, which, which I can't, um, this will go back to zero. 
There's a better way to do that, though. Sorry, I was giving you a recap here. So we've got this uh, get visit helper method. Uh, all we're doing when we land on the page is assigning the IP address. And here's our very simple view. So we print out the IP address. Let's put a couple exclamation points there. And we call this get visit count helper method, which um, if you haven't visited it before, it creates that value, sets it to zero, and says, enjoy your visit if this is the very first time you've been here. Every time after that, it just shows you how many times you've actually visited. Every time you press refresh, that number's going to go up. All right. And you can put any number of other comments in there for, you know, sure. number of views, this many. With an else, if you could put several different ones in there, right? Absolutely. We could uh, say, well, why not do this? We'll use this. Maybe you want to discourage people from coming to your website. So I say, well, else if, I don't know, you've been here. How many times have I been there? 14. Let's see, if I've been here more than 17, so 16 times, I'll say, go find something else to do. The Bachelorette. How do you spell Bachelorette? The Bachelorette is on tonight. Not a fan of The Bachelorette. I am very much a fan of The Bachelor, though. People always spell it like Batch. I think it's more like that, right? Bachelorette. Bachelorette's really fun to watch. The Bachelorette, eh, that's all right. But my wife likes it, and this is how we spend time together. So, okay, number 15. Okay, oh, we're getting awfully close here. It's not going to go yet. Remember, it's when it's greater than 16. Okay, I got up to 17 times. Oh, I should go find something else to do. Yeah, Bachelorette is on today. Okay, there we go. You can do whatever you want, right? And you're not limited to, to visits or, you know, user IDs. You can stick whatever you want into a session and just kind of keep track of what your user's doing. And, uh, you know, change uh, the user's experience with this, uh, with this uh, feature. Okay, so one last thing we got to do though, right? Um, as I said, if I go into if I go into here, there's nothing stopping me from say erasing this session ID. If I do this, if I just delete it, it's going to um, set everything back to zero. I should have some facility on my web page to do this for me. So like this is kind of like the equivalent of um, a logout. We got to clear this session. And I think the best place to do that would be in the layout. So we don't dip into the layout too often. But the idea here would be that, you know, if you're on a different page, suppose we had more than one page, I'd still want to be able to log out or clear my session every single time. So right up at the top, I'm going to create a link. I will say ahref. And I don't haven't defined this route yet, but it will be coming soon. Let's say... We'll call it reset visits, just to make it very clear on what it actually is. And we'll do the same thing here. Reset visits, just like that. So come back, go slow, do a refresh. Whoops, it's giving me all that uh, security information there. I should have that. So right now, this doesn't actually exist. If I press this, it's going to say Sinatra doesn't know this, did he? I don't know, what did Frank Sinatra drink? Like, what's in this glass up here? Oh, sometimes it's a glass. I guess it's not this time. I it guess he's... Like a bourbon or something. He's probably drinks bourbon. He seemed like a bourbon kind of guy. Um, yeah, we're not doing that. I think that's the one you see if you got, like, a nil error or something, or one of those syntax errors. So I've got the route. I hover over top of it, and so, you know, you got uh, the URL at the bottom. It's very small. I'm sure you can't see it, but... Uh, all I need is to define a matching route inside of my actions.rb file. So over here in actions.rb, this is where all that, uh, this is where I'm going to clear everything up. So I say, 
what did I call it? Reset count? I called it reset visits. There we go. Okay, reset underscore visits. Do. And if you recall, you had a couple of options. You can either just set the, the relevant value to nil, or you can just clear everything out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear everything out and redirect back here, just like what I've got on the slide. So session dot clear and redirect me to the home page. So let's see how this works. Okay, who knows how many times I've probably been up to like 19. We stopped counting now. It's just like, you know, it's my, my program is being kind of rude now. So I say, okay, I'm going to reset my visits. Still coming from the same IP address, but now the session is clearing and it's going to redirect. So this is as, as though this was the very first time I visited. So you're doing something analogous uh, when, you're, when you get down to work today that you're going to be clearing out the uh, user ID. And now you uh, your user won't be able to um, uh, post to your, your Finstagram timeline or anything like that until, until you go back and uh, log in again. So... I can do this over and over again. I just reset it again, even though it's, you know, it's just set to zero right now. I refresh again. It starts counting. If you wanted to set up a counter on your site to track the number of unique IP addresses, you can set it up using a uh, validation form that checks to make sure that the IP is a new IP every time. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, perhaps. Um, have those kind of counters just to showcase how popular their site is. Yeah, I, you know, that's, that's, those are good statistics to measure as well. Um, if you're going to track IPs, though, this would be a job for the database, right? And you could link that information to the site to showcase that. Here. Absolutely. Um, uh, we're kind of running short on time. I'm not looking for an example of how to do it. I just wanted to know if it's possible. It is a good example, and yes, it is possible. Uh, so the suggestion was, well, what if you want to find out, you know, unique IP addresses? Um, this would not be difficult to set up in with Active Record. You could, uh, you know, make a new table, say um, one column is just IP, the other column is visits, and every single time that IP visits, or even a new IP visits, a new record is created in the database, and then you can see how many times that person has visited. Hey Tom, good to see you again. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And there's also like uh, there might even be gems. Let's say, um, let's, how do you how do you describe it? You want to find out an IP's location in the world. Let's say gem IP geo location. Surely something is going to be returned here. Oh, look at that! Retrieve the geo location of an IP address. Super cool. I wonder how well it works. Should we try it? We got about eight minutes before I start going overtime here. Uh, oh no, you gotta like sign up. Never mind. Oh, consider donating. Consider donating. Yeah, I don't think so. I wouldn't consider donating. But yeah, this looks like it's got a private service. But there it is. I mean, if you want to know where your users are coming from, that's uh, that's kind of neat. Well, the code looks like it's fairly accessible, so somebody could. Oh, certainly. This is all open source, um, you know, and if you're, you decide to become a web developer, I mean, this it's basically all open source. Uh, you don't really make money selling software anymore. Uh, it, it just this this one, of course, is copyright. I'm not exactly sure. This guy's probably doing some sort of open source for a private corporation. But uh, yeah, there's always these license agreements. And I don't know. It's better just to plead ignorance and go ahead and use it. Uh Okay, any questions though? Nice, short, and sweet. Very vital to creating an actual functional web app. All right, if there are no questions, then I am going to uh, summarize all this in your, your lecture email, and uh, it looks like Grant and Nick are here to help you out.